because that was a deep frozen head. I hope it thawed away. So, entering the maxillary sinus. Oh, yeah, there are some nice things we see already. If I point up here, you can see the way to the natural ostium. That's the natural ostium. There are some mucosal folds. The inferior one of this may reflect to one of the lamellas of the bulla, where this inserts to the papyrus lamina. Up there, you can nicely look directly into the ethmoidal infundibulum. This time, you do so from inside. And what you see to your right is nothing else but the lateral aspect of the uncinate process. So you have the natural ostium, and I'm going back a little bit to give you a better overall view. And now we go further back. Here we can look up into the maxilloethmoidal angle, and you see some cells shining through. Note the difference in color. It's a little bit bluish. So these are cells in the maxilloethmoidal angle, and this would probably be the area where one would go on into the ethmoid if one does a transmaxillary accentuation of the ethmoid. Well, what else have we got in that sinus? I will rotate my lens now first a little bit to the left, which is laterally, to get a better view of the floor of that orbit, which equals the roof of the sinus. And there we can beautifully see the outline of the infraorbital nerve during all of its course. It's bulging a little bit into the floor of the sinus. Look how nicely we can see the anterior, sorry, the infraorbital nerve passing on there. Small mucosal fold next to it. And there we already look almost to the anterior wall of that sinus. Remember, we have a 30-degree lens. So what you see now at about 11 to 12 o'clock is the anterior part of the infraorbital nerve swinging down a little bit. So what you see as 12 o'clock actually is straightforward immediately at the infraorbital foramen. So this is the floor of the orbit with the clearly outlined course of the infraorbital nerve. So rotating the scope back to the medial wall of the sinus, let's see whether we can find any remarkable thing up there. There's nothing of special interest. So we're going back to the, see the floor of the sinus. So we look to the floor of the sinus, and sometimes you might be able to see some dental roots coming through. But in that case, there's, again, nothing of specific interest. It's a completely unremarkable uh, sinus. Now going back again, and what appears to be a little bit whitish is nothing else but the lacrimal eminencia, so it is the bulging of the nasolacrimal duct in the medial wall. And if I rotate my lens again, we there have the maxilloethmoidal recess, and up there we directly look into the ethmoidal infundibulum, the natural ostium of the maxillary sinus. So there's no specific change, no anatomical variant inside that sinus. This would be the area of the posterior fontanelle, up there where we have that mucosa shining through a little bit. Okay, I will go out again and now switch over to a zero degree lens and start with the surgical procedure now. Okay, so we dive into the nose now with the zero degree lens, bypass all that debris over here, and I will try to start with the surgical procedure. Can I have the sickle scalpel? So, what we would do first is identify so, what we would do first is identify the uncinate process here. Clearly, we can identify its posterior margin to see over here. And if we're not sure how far anteriorly this uncinate reaches, it's always better to start with the resection relatively far posteriorly, as I will do now, and just cut through the uncinate process. Probably we can go as much anteriorly as up here. Let's try, yes. So, this would be the way and the angle how to insert the scalpel but then immediately turn it down and try to get as acute an angle as possible. Not go too far laterally. This might lead us directly into the orbit. So in a very acute angle, cutting around the uncinate process in an anteriorly convex shape, and now inferiorly, and take that down 
fill the bony insertion of the inferior turbinate, which you see here. So once again, if we switch, fold that over, this was our incision now around the antenate process, and now we lift what we have cut around or circumcised a little bit medially. And there we see now our antenate process, which is fused a little bit posteriorly to the middle, uh, to the ethmoidal bulla. So this is the antenate process. Our sandwich consists of medial mucosal aspect, bone, and a lateral mucosal aspect. And this pouch we have opened now is the ethmoidal infundibulum, which we have entered from back there. See, all the way, if I insert my knife now and come out back there again in front of the ethmoidal bulla, this is the hiatus semilunaris. And all that space, look, it's as deep as the blade of the sickle scalpel is long. So this is the ethmoidal bulla, and in the floor of this, we should be able to identify the maxillary sinus ostium. Now, with a pair of straight fixation forceps, I go in and carefully twist loose first the inferior insertion of the ansinet, without putting lesion especially to the turbinate area. Leave that and then go up and grasp for the superior attachment of the ansinet and turn that loose as well. And then resect the entire ansinet process, which you can nicely see now in my forceps, and I remove that. So let's get rid of these final remnants of the ansinate process. And usually the vast majority of polyps already would have gone together with these structures. So our situation has changed. Now we have got a wide access to the middle meatus, and we can have a look at the bulla and see that that bulla is fairly large and getting close to the medial aspect here of the middle uh, turbinate. So where's our maxillary sinus osteum? We don't see it. It should be somewhere down there. But we will leave that a little for a little bit later. Um, well, I will go back again for the 30-degree um, lens just to demonstrate the anatomy now that we have taken away the unsinet and see whether there's some change in the accessibility of the frontal recess which should be there. So, 30 degree lens. In again, insertion of the turbinate, ethmoidal bulla, and now let's look up. And there you already get a view onto the frontal recess and into the frontal sinus. Just with that simple resection of the uncinate process. And now let's see where our way into the maxillary sinus is. Remember, we resected the uncinate. We are looking onto the bulla, retracting a little bit, and now rotating the 30 degree scope a little bit laterally. And there we got our friend, the maxillary sinus ostium. We have a nice access looking into the maxillary sinus, and I would not touch an ostium of that size. There is no need to do any surgical approach to that once you resected the onsenet. Going out again and switching back to the zero degree lens. and we'll continue our surgery. I uh, will go with a straight Blakesley forceps, and our next step will be to resect the ethmoidal bulla because we, let's assume, our patient has diseased ethmoidal bulla, or we know we have to go for the posterior ethmoid anyway. So I identify the bulla, open it, and do so as much